Good night. Night. Uh, oof. I think those penis coladas are coming back. Italy, Mrs. Root, the nadir of our research, our sternest test. Instability off the leash is what we'll find. Your average Italian is totally unsocialized, his attitude being, well, pardon my French, Mrs. Root, up yours, Giacometti, I'm all right. Historically ungovernable, do you see? Small warring parties stapled together in hurry. Guelphs and Ghibellines, was it? We'll meet them later, I don't doubt. Arriva! They've still no governance as we'd recognise it, Mrs. Root. There was one MP, I've heard it said, who, in order to drum up business, posed on page three in the buff. Madame Ciccolina, if I'm not mistaken. I don't think she was a serious politician, Henry. Well, none of them are, Mrs. Root. But be that as it may, we'll not want page three values in the Mother of Parliament. We'll not want Tory ladies in the buff. Don't encourage them there, Mrs. Root. The Italian male poses a constant threat to a respectable English woman. The latest electroencephalographic tests carried out in Sweden show that the Italian male thinks of sex every 30 seconds. Happily, I shall be at your side and armed. A blow to the back of the neck with a rolled up copy of the telegraph and your average Italian goes down like an ox in an abattoir. <laughs> All front, you see. Sheer anarchy, Mrs. Root. Law and order is a concept totally unknown to your Italian. His only loyalty is to himself and thereafter to the family. Your Italian has an unhealthy respect for family values. In some areas of Italy, mainly in the south, it's not unusual to find a family of 40 living under the same roof. Great grandfathers, distant cousins, fat women in the kitchen, all carrying shotguns. Hence your mafia. Mafia, Henry. I hope we don't meet them. Mm, unavoidable woman. The Italian has taken his family way of doing things into organised crime, Mrs. Root. Having no respect for central government, he makes his bones over the meatballs, kisses a goat's private parts, and then shoots the man next door. Well, not want that in Isha. He certainly won't, Henry. Ah, Bologna. This could be appertaining, Mrs. Root. Another paradox of Italy. Highlights the madness, do you see? A communist stronghold here in the affluent north. Not yards from where Ferraris are made, a Bolshevik embraces presides over the town hall. We're dropping on the communist mayor, catch him with his goats. <laughs> I hope we'll have time to do some shopping, Henry. The shops here are so wonderful. A mirage, Mrs. Root. Triumph of style over content, mere window dressing. Fashion and frivolity papering over a moral vacuum. Italy is a rose garden built on a cesspit. Anyway, we haven't got time to enjoy ourselves. We're here to work.
We'll catch the mayor in his office. Our last chance to see a type like him. Dinosaurus, blue whale, deprived of his political plankton, beached on the tide of history. A fish out of water. A whale isn't a fish, Henry. Right, a red herring, then, if you prefer. My point holds, nevertheless. No, non credo. Veramente? Va bene, allora d'accordo così. Henry Root allora Wetfish. This is the lady wife. Va bene, va bene così. Quick audience with the mayor, if you'd be so good. Henry Root? Wetfish? Yes, travelling Europe for the BBC. Planning a festival of European culture. Wait for a moment, please. Money. He'd be a grizzly crop haired peasant, you Mr. mark my words. Hands like hams. Opinions as outdated as his trousers. We'd better dress down so as not to embarrass him. Oh, no, you'll be all right. I'll remove okay. my hat. I'm sorry. I don't know if I can see you because it's very, very busy. We're all busy, my good lady. We hope to be out of Italy by the day after tomorrow. So if you'd be good enough to tell his lordship to put off milking the goats till later, I'd be very much obliged. Mr. Root? Yes. Please follow me. Oh, certainly. Mrs. Root? If he's a communist, I'd hate to see their conservatives. Senor Root. How do you do? Lady Mrs. wife. How do you do? Dovete scusarmi, ma non ho molto tempo a disposizione. C'è una cerimonia. In che cosa posso esservi utile, esattamente? He's sorry, but he has only a few minutes for you. A ceremony is waiting for him. Obliged, Your Worship. The fact is, I haven't got much time myself. Just passing through on the way to Rome. Hope to be out of Italy by the end of the week. I expected to find you packing. <laughs> Mementos in a tea chest, golden handshake, carriage clock for, what, 20 years' service? Packing? Well, I mean, for people like you, the party's over, isn't it? I mean, thanks to our Mrs. Thatcher, the map of Europe has changed radically over the last two years. The tide of history has left people like you, communists, Marxists, trots, whatever, up the creek without a paddle. Signor Ruth, non l'hanno ben informata. Prima di tutto, io non sono marxista. Poi il Partito Comunista Italiano non ha mai seguito il modello sovietico. Mr. Root, he thinks you've been misinformed. First oh, yeah. of all, he isn't Marxist, and then the Italian Communist Party has never followed the Russian model. Eh, signor Root, per certe cose, lei potrebbe anche pensare che il Partito Comunista Italiano è alla destra del Partito Laburista inglese. In some respects, you can say that they are to the right of your Labour Party. A recruit for the Liberal Democrats in Italy, Mrs. Root. We come all this way, and what do we find? Shirley Williams. Root, Signor Root, ma la cerimonia attende, io devo andare, non posso fargli aspettare ancora. He is so sorry, but he has to go. They are waiting for him. Oh, that's all right, Your Worship. We'll tag along. We've got an hour to kill. You bring a video, Mrs. Root. There'll be photo opportunities here. After you, my dear. Do lettura degli articoli del Codice Civile relativi ai diritti e ai doveri dei coniugi tra loro e verso i figli. Articolo 143. Con il matrimonio, il marito e la moglie acquistano gli stessi diritti e assumono i medesimi doveri. Far too charming. Dal matrimonio deriva l'obbligo... We'll not want that sort of thing coming up the channel tunnel. It's hard to imagine anyone as attractive as him in British politics. You are saying he's turned about the blasphemy woman. Entrambi coniugi... He's as slippery as an eel. Dandy. An afternoon man. You'd hire him out of the pally for old women to dance with. Now, with your squat, old-time Bolshevik, wearing a suit stitched out of industrial sacking, you knew where you stood. I wonder where he gets his shoes. Art there, Henry. Let's stop. Uh, art, Mrs. Root. Nothing wrong with it in its place, which is the vault of a bank, standing security against your Glaxo shares. And I think it would be wonderful to live among so much beauty. Bad for the character. Look at your Italian, bruised by culture, by an excess of history at every turn. Expose an Englishman to it and his brain rots. 
Keats, was it? Ode to an Urn, Spanish Steps, Beauty is Truth and so forth. Drowned in the Ellis Pond, I'm not surprised. Anyway, we get enough of that in Rome. The Appian Way, Parthian Shot, the Pyrrhic Victory. We'll get enveloped if we don't watch out. Eternal city, Mr. Root. This won't take long. It's a good place to sit down. Take the weight off the feet. Beautiful, Henry. I really think I could live here. Do what, woman? Well, I mean, I'd really like to stay for a bit. There's so much I'd like to see. Couldn't we keep walking? No, no, we'll not walk, Mrs. Root. If you want art, we'll do it from a shadow bank. Do a tour. Art from the back of a bus. Ugh. Here we are, Signore. To enter and from express tickets. I'm obliged. <laughs> well, two hours, eh? Well, if you're sure, there's nothing shorter. Oh, do you, uh, do you have a brochure on the Mafia? That didn't go down too well, did it? Here in Italy, Signore, the Mafia is uh, hardly a laughing matter. I think you misunderstand me, young man. I am a serious investigator covering the whole of Italy for the BBC. The BBC, Signore? That's what I said, young man. Personally briefed by Duke Hussey. I apologise, Signore, but... Mafia is a sensitive subject now. You never know who we are talking to. Many people are under their control. Well, uh, who could I talk to? Who uh, can be trusted? There is one man at the moment. This man is Leo Luca Orlando. You have heard uh, about uh, the spring of Palermo, I suppose. Agua Mineral, is it? Oh, please, signore. It was the time of the Mexi trials. Orlando made many, many enemies. And uh, many people uh, want him quiet. You could telephone to his uh, political headquarters, if you want, but uh, uh, they are not very trusting. And I doubt if you'll be like him. I think they'll deal with me, young man. I wish you luck, signore. Thank you. Is there anything else? Yeah. Where did you get your suit? My suit? Is this the queue for the ancient Rome Express? I certainly hope so. Oh, Americans, which is rude. How long have you been here? Uh, we arrived yesterday. And tomorrow we're off to Venice. Oh, I'd really like to go to Venice, Henry. They say it's ever so romantic. We could go on a gondola. Like punting through a sewer, Mrs. Root. You don't want to bother with that. Did you know that a Doberman Pinscher dropped into the Grand Canal as a life expectancy of exactly one and a half seconds? I don't like the sound of that, Hiram. Well, that's Venice for you. Sinking under the weight of its own corruption. Well, we'll certainly strike Venice off our list, sir. Thank you for your advice. My pleasure. Oh, uh, Hiram and Ethel Honeypacker, we're from Ohio. Oh, Henry and Muriel Root from Isha. How do you do? How do you do? Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name is uh, Roberto, and I'm very happy to be your guide. Rome is a wonderful city. We've got all kinds of monuments, and that's what we're going to show you today. Take a look at your right side now, and you see the ruins of the Circus Maximus. This was the largest structure ever built in the antiquity. Could have accommodated 300,000 spectators. This place was used for chariot races. 
I saw that one, Hiram. Then her, wasn't it? Loved him, hated her. <laughs> <laughs> Loved him. Oh, yeah, that's good. <laughs> don't mind me, don't mind me. <laughs> yeah, don't mind me, Roberto. And uh, return all the way back, completing seven circles. You can easily imagine the excitement. Bert Langston, wasn't it? Or was it a stiff one? What a head. Charlton Heskins. Heston. And him. <laughs> I prefer Kirk Douglas myself. I've always liked Kirk Douglas. I have him, I have him. I know who you mean. Spot Arcus. <laughs> you know, Kirk Douglas is only four foot nine. And when he played those scenes in Spot Arcus with Gene Simmons, he had to stand on tea chest. No. Really? Yes. Gene Simmons, now she was wonderful. Whatever happened to Gene Simmons, I wonder? Well, I've always liked Glenn Ford. I never miss a Glenn Ford picture. You surprise me, frankly. I have never been able to see the point of Glenn Ford, neither here nor there, if you get my drift. Yeah, mind you, he was a real-life war hero. Perhaps that's the point. Follow me, men, up a hill, blown to bits. <laughs> Red badge of courage. No, I think, I think that was Artie Murphy, the uh, little English dancer. Uh, Married Mel Ferrer, I rather think. In front of you, you can see now the Colosseum. This is the real coat of armor, bro. Colosseum is a nickname. The real name will be Flag and Amphitheater. I've heard it said that bus conductors in Naples get a bonus every month if they refrain from hitting the passenger. <laughs> no manners, you see. A faulty sense of etiquette. Hence the, um... Huh? I'll not say the word in front of Roberto. My lips are sealed and all that. Love story? No, don't be silly. That's love story. Oh, it's Dr. Shivago. I got it! <laughs> the Godfather. Mr. Roof's talking about the Mafia. Oh. Precisely, Ira. They're all in it. I read last year the Naples Central Criminal Court, 27 men face charges of extortion, murder, assault, arson, bombing and slander. The 27 defendants were nine monks, seven schoolmasters, five doctors, three policemen, and the mayor. <laughs> they were all acquitted. The chief prosecutor lodged an appeal before it could be heard. He was arrested for running a brothel. <laughs> Absolutely shocking, shocking business. Nice young man, nice suit, kisses his mama goodbye in the morning, goes out and shoots three men in a barber shop. <laughs> then goes back to mama and the meatballs. I mean, I ask. Oh, pardon. Oh, sorry. Excuse me. Oh, I for lunch. This is a Trevi fountain. At the center of it, you see Neptune standing on a shell. This is the most beautiful Baroque fountain in the world. It was made in the year 1735 by Nicola Salve. Tradition says that if you want to return to Rome, you have to drop a coin in the basin. We'll not bother with that, thank you very much. <laughs> you keep your money in your pocket, that's my advice. Now, Dolce Vita, was it? The big Swede in the fountain on all fours in her dinner dress. You remember Ethel? Anita Edward. That's the one. Right. I wonder what became of her. Have you done much shopping, Ethel? They've got yeah. very nice shops. There are actually two more traditions to know about. If you drop two coins, you get married. With three, you get divorced. Yes. Mrs. Root! Mr. Root, would you mind if I went shopping with you? My friend Bubba back in Alabama would just love your town. No, like no, you. no. You come with me and I'll show you where I got it. Does anyone have any questions? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, just one, Roberto. What time the shop shut? 7.30. 7.30? We've got plenty of time. So who's going to come with us? Who's... Oh, Roberto? Yes. Where did you get your handbag? My handbag. <laughs> yes, yes, of course. Yes, yes, I understand that. Yes, I've got that. No, 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 I've committed it to memory. Yes, I'll be there. Arrivederci. Quick, this is Root. A memoir, a memoir. All right, Henry. I'll go over there so I can get the background Quickly, in. quickly. Confidential audiovisual aid memoir, Rome, for my ears only. I have arranged a secret rendezvous between myself and the little Sicilian politician Leo Luca Orlando, erstwhile mayor of Palermo and vanguard of the anti-mafia hunt. 
I depart immediately under plain cover. The venue, Holiday Hotel, Chili Chow, must remain secret. If anything happens to me, this tape must be destroyed. Over and out. <laughs> Mrs. Roat. They're closed to the public, Henry. Very possibly, Mrs. Root. But we can't leave now. We don't want to draw attention to ourselves. Well, if we don't draw attention to ourselves, how are we going to get anything to eat? All in good time, Mrs. Root. It's a board meeting, you see. The whole family. The fat man embraces, he'll be the don. Yet we'll not ask him for the menu. They'll be the capa de tutti. She'll be mama. Watch out for the meatballs. Careful, Mrs. Root. Ah, too late. They've spotted us. Look what you've done now. Don't mention cement. Oh, God, the Don himself wants a word. That natural. Oops. Buongiorno. 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 Che cosa gradite? Mangia. Manger. Yeah, point taken, Don. I have you. Omerta, a canary that sang, not as good as a wink. Cosa vuole? Uh, carne, vitello, spezzatini, pasta, lasagna, spaghetti? Do a pasta, a vino, per favore. Certo. Pasta, vino. Si. Grazie, grazie, signor. Well done, woman. He's got me down for an idiot. All part of my plan. down the throat like a dino rod he's had it. Into the freezer, upside down on a meat hook. One word out of place and we'd be head first into a bollard. We'd be feeding the fishes wearing a cement waistcoat. Oh, surely not, Henry. They seem ever so nice. Oh, God, we're compromised. They're trying to involve us. Act natural. Look as if you're enjoying yourself. No, no, no. No, no, no. Oh, that was in 
invigorating, Henry. You're lucky to be alive, Mrs. Root. We'll not push our luck. We'll move off now. Oh, no, no. Si, si, si. No, si, si. no, no. Si, si, no, si. No, si. no, no. Si. No, si. no, Thank you very much. Come on, Mrs. Root. Si. Well, I don't normally blow my bags, Mrs. Root, but I handled that very well, I think. If they suspected my links with Orlando. Oh, dear, oh, dear. Mafioso Americano. Signor Orlando. I'm sorry? Henry Root to see Signor Orlando. Uh, Mr. Orlando. Signor Root? Uh, yes, see. Si. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. I'm the Luke Orlando. Nice to meet you. Oh, good of you to see me. Henry Root. Man of action like yourself. Peas in a pod, in fact. Is that so? Well, what can I tell you first? Investigating all aspects of Italy for the BBC. Can't avoid mentioning a mafia. You've got it under control, have you? I mean, with uh, barriers coming down and frontiers opening up, uh, might not men of respect be uh, carrying their violin cases hither and thither throughout the community? We don't want godfathers in British high streets. I don't think you, you need to worry, Mr. Root. Nothing will change. Oh, I'm very relieved to hear you say that. I'm sure the Mafia will get short shrift outside Italy. Anyway, if you ever need a safe house in Isha, mine will be available. Myself standing shotgun on the porch and Mrs. Root stirring the meatballs in the kitchen. You are stupid. You are a stupid man who says stupid things. Because this situation will not change. Because the Mafia will not come in Europe. Because the Mafia is already in Europe. The Mafia is already in your country. Well, you'll excuse me, Mr. Orlando, if um, I tell you what you say with a pinch of salt. You see, I have one advantage over you. I live in England. I think I will be aware if olive-skinned young men were lounging about Isha High Street with their violin cases at the ready. It is not a game. It is not a game, a stupid man. It is not a game, and you are a stupid man. And your ignorance is our enemy. You are a danger for people fighting against the mafia. You are a danger for your country. You are a danger for England. Andate via, per favore. Andate via. I don't need bodyguards. 
because uh, they cannot defend me from you. They cannot defend me from your stupidity. I have nothing to tell you. I wasted my time, Mr. Roots. Oh, in that case, I'll go. Thank you very much. Let me out, please. Patrocire. Was it interesting? So so. What was he like? Very rude, actually. He won't get far with that attitude. Rather wish I hadn't seen him. I probably know too much now. Could be a target myself. Having a shave in a barber shop, man comes through the door with a machine gun, and I go down with a blaze of bullets. Stupid man. Oh, it's a nice top coat. Ah! Oh, oh, that should fix it. That should fix it. The near thing, though. I, I, I just I saw that leg about to go, and I, I leapt in in the nick of time. <laughs> You're lucky I was passing. <laughs> Not at all. My pleasure. Taking your time, Henry. Very important rendezvous this morning, Mrs. Root. Madame Chicolina, no less. The dancing MP, ex page three girl. Meeting at her club. The chanteurs, you see. Protest songs, I dare say. You'll be all right, will you? Yeah, I'll be fine. Yeah. I'll be working myself. I'm meeting a Euro MP's wife. Oh, yes. Who might she be? Marina Reaper de Miana. She's really quite the thing. She's an expert on everything, style, fashion. And she's written two autobiographies, giving the most intimate details of her personal life. It's the Dolce Vita, really. The Dolce Vita? Not really you, Mrs. Root. When is all this happening? This afternoon. I'm going to meet her at a new art gallery she's opening. I'm going to enjoy that. And afterwards, she's going to show me around her fashion house. Well, where am I going to meet up with you? Well... I suppose you could meet us for tea. She always goes to Babington's Tea Rooms on the Spanish Steps. But you wouldn't be interested in the fashion house, Henry. It's not your thing, is it, fashion? On the contrary, Mrs. Root, I like to keep my eye on what's happening. I'll meet you for tea at this, uh, Babington's at, uh, 4.30, say? Oh. Mr. Henry Root, see Madame Cicolina. Eh, guardi, deve fare il biglietto. No, thank you. Eh, no, guardi, non può entrare se non fa il biglietto. No, 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 private rendezvous. No, no, lei deve fare il biglietto per entrare. Private rendezvous. Eh, Riccardo, scusa. Ah. Sì. Riccardo, Henry Root, wet fish. I have an appointment to see Madame Cicolina. I'm Cicolina's manager. Oh. She's just about to make her entrance. Why don't you see her act and after we'll introduce you? Oh, thank you very much. Very nice. Nice sunglasses you've got. Oh, thank you. Scusate. Grazie. Grazie. Scusate. Grazie. Thanks so much. A voi, signori, l'eccezionale, l'unica cicciolina. Personal friend of mine, you see. Imagine if I could have them all myself. 
My mistake. Hardly know the woman. So, Mr. Ruth, did you enjoy the show? Hello. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, come, I'll introduce you to Cicciolina. Oh. Busy woman, I dare say, full political diary. I, I wouldn't want to disturb her between performances. Please. Leona, this is the Signor Root. Uh, Henry Root, wet fish. My card. Oh, I expect you'd like one too. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Take a seat, please. So, Mr. Root, did you like my show? Oh, yeah, first class, madam. I'm not a theatrical myself, more of a naval man. Seen the world. Red light up an alley, bump and grind behind a curtain. Takes quite a bit to shock me. Anyway, I expect you know what you're doing. What are you doing? <laughs> what I am doing, I am enjoying myself. <laughs> it's a political gesture, Henry. I want to shock people to make them realize there are worse things than taking off your clothes. Worse things than taking off your clothes? I find it hard to imagine what, madam. Return of a Labour government, perhaps. What about war, famine, pollution, cruelty? These are terrible things, Henry. These are what I am protesting against. Oh, it's all a bit out of date, isn't it? Peace through... Uh... Nudity? Smacks of the 60s. Do your own thing, let it all hang out. Isla White, was it? The little one with a flower and a banjo up his nose, Bob Dylan? But what was wrong with the 60s? People become free to express themselves, to reveal their emotions. That is a good thing. Ridiculous, madam. <laughs> I think you are getting hot under your collar, Henry. <laughs> An Englishman, madam, never gets hot under anything. What are you so afraid of? The sex drive is a beautiful gift from God. <laughs> we should enjoy it. <laughs> Henry. <laughs> well, that's as maybe, madam, but I'll just say this. I'll be off. Hey, do you enjoy yourself, Henry? <laughs> of course I do. Good heavens, I... I, I... Mm, well, you should enjoy yourself. You are an attractive man. Relax. Loosen up. Mm -hmm. Throw off your English inhibition. You think about what I said. Mm -hmm. Henry. Yeah, yeah, I guess so. Henry? 
Henry, you're not with me at all, are you? Is that woman? Sorry, sorry. In the grip of a large idea. Puzzling it out. Here, lick this. Lick again. There, that's better. What's wrong with enjoying yourself? That's the question. Damn tricky. Can't be right, but don't know why. I'm sorry, Muriel, but the photographer, you know how it is. I do, I do. <laughs> you will be happy. Oh, Chandra. I hope my wife hasn't been boring you. On the contrary, we became good friends. Haven't you, Muriel? We certainly have. <laughs> now, it's time to go to my fashion showroom. Splendid. Yes? Let's be on our way. It's very charming, my husband. <laughs> <laughs> Now I showed you my favorite. Look this. Oh, well, I'm not surprised that's your oh, favorite. This is fantastic. Oh, it's beautiful. With all the little bows down the back. <laughs> oh, that's Look, lovely. It's very amusing. <laughs> yes, I couldn't wear that, though. <laughs> and now I show you my hat. This is my collection of Oh, that's lovely. That's really lovely. Did you design that? Yes, I designed. I shall this for you. Oh, well, I can't wear that. <laughs> this is perfectly for you. Oh. Look. Oh, <laughs> nice. <laughs> I've, I've got too much hair for hats. <laughs> hey, you women carry on. I'll split. Oh, Henry, will it be all right? We'll meet later then, shall we? Yeah. The color is the same Whatever. over the jacket. It'll catch you later. Forward, doesn't it? Now I should do the other one for you. <laughs> Beautiful. Where? <Yeah. laughs> oh, uh, yeah. well, what, what about that smart cafe we found yesterday by the hotel? Great, why not? <laughs> for you. For what the... time? <laughs> it's fantastic. Oh, about an hour or so. <laughs> Great. Ciao. Yeah, it's not very really. nice. <laughs> no. <laughs> Oh, no. Oh. Certainly not. I'm expecting a lady. Yeah, it's fine. Yes, thank you very much. Col piede. Tu non poi se si è rotta la moto io non c'entro niente. La moto è rotta e non mettere in dubbio quello che dico io. Non l'ho sfasciata io, devi stare attento a quello che dico io. No, io non metto in dubbio niente. Ma tu sei stato lì, just a minute, keep it down, the lady's present. Che cosa vuole lei? Si sieda e ci lasci discutere. No, in Italia è normale. C'è un senso di dirlo, vai. Prendi un bel caffè, così ti dai un attimino una risettura. Ma è bella che cosa? What? Um, yeah, a beer. La birra. Una birra. Senta, hai visto quel signore di noi inglese che prima stava parlando? Per noi stavamo litigando. Chi è? È che la birra. No. Oh. Chi è birra? Sì, yeah, grazie. Prego. Grazie.
Chi è Billy? woman what kept you I was about to leave well, I'm really very sorry Henny but I was enjoying myself so much I completely lost track of time oh I do believe you've missed me don't be so silly woman come on women <laughs> <laughs> so how was it then the so-called Dolce Vita it was fun it wasn't really me they're not our sort of people. I told you, didn't I? Henry. No, I haven't, as it happens, Mrs. Root. It wasn't really me. Not such a good idea. Well, good night, Henry. Good night, Muriel. <laughs> 